And we're back. With natural gas not included. Yes, uh, still constructing this natural gas monstrosity. And I've also forgotten... Well, I also forgot to count in the natural gas I'm going to get from the natural gas geysers into my calculations. Once I throw those in, I should end up with enough water to get me up to 100 dupes. That's the plan. Well, I'll have to do some math on that in the background, but uh, I believe I made enough excess natural gas generators, I should be able to handle this one way or the other. Uh, the bottom 11 can serve for siphoning off any natural gas that occurs from the environment. Now, uh, at the moment, I am just putting in the gas piping. Now, I'm using insulated ceramic pipes to actually drop off the natural gas. Uh, 11 natural gas generators per row, uh, 90 grams per natural gas generator, 990 grams total out of a kilo. So, looks pretty good. Um, Dupe wise, we've got 28 actually in the population and another 6 in rockets, so we're up to 34. Hopefully, though, I'm looking to hire some more. I should be good up till 50 plus before I even get this online. I think it's about 58, maybe 59. Yeah, I think that's what I worked it out the math to be before I have to have this uh, whole thing up and running. So we should be fine on that front. Now, a uh, couple of things I forgot to do here is I need to put in. Yes, that was it. I need to put in a little water pit down here so I can collect the. Eh, collect the polluted water that falls out of this and I need to do the whole power grid uh, you see the problem is I've got to get say this row up here uh, and this row down here into the same power grid so we're gonna put in some a few of these should help oh ah, great there's always a wrong one somewhere well cancel you no you won't cancel because that order doesn't work Anyway, that should actually allow me to run power down the side. It's going to be a very, very messy power grid. Uh, the reason being, I'm going to have all of these are outputs. Actually, while I'm down here, I can... Is that niobium? Please tell me that's niobium. Yes, it is. Excellent. I'm going to have six gas outputs, one for each row, but only the top five will really be active. The bottom one will siphon out a little bit, but it won't siphon out as much as the, the first five. So the first five are going to be the most active and uh, so the top four rows completely active 100 percent of the time the fifth one will be a little bit wonky but i want to spread it out so that the power draw is spread like this level this level and a mishmash of the bottom two levels are spread onto one grid and then the all the rest are spread on the other that way i don't have to well worry too much actually let's put in this power grid now or at least start it up um you now how am i going to do this is that all gold yet? Yeah. Okay, so that will probably hook in down here. Uh, but the thing is, I want this to actually hook in. The top row is the first one that will become active. I want to hook that into my bottom power generation grid and hook that into there. So I need, what, to curve it around back here. Then I'll have to bring it straight down the side. No, it would be bad. Actually, I'll do it. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, yes, I will. I will do it this way, down the side. Boom. All right, so that's power grid number one. That's the bulk of it. Then I'll link this all the way down here. So this way I can get it into these bottom two rows. These bottom two rows are going to be a little trickier. I want to actually, yeah, it's going to be really messy. I did some testing in a in my debug testing map. And trying to split it up between these is going to be just painful. Um, so for example, I'm going to have those two on one grid, then these two on the other grid, these two on the first grid. So it'll be grid one and two. So grid one, grid two, grid one, grid two, grid one, grid two. I have to split up the last two though. I don't think that really makes too much of a difference. Uh, so I need to put, hmm, yeah, we'll put these there. And of course, I have horrifically forgotten something. I turned off a bunch of these uh, incubators a long time ago. Oops. Yeah, the reason I turned them off is I actually wanted to use the power for something else. Where was I running the power for? Damn it, I had a reason for that. Oh yeah, it was to run the it was to run the vacuum pumps over here to get this whole place vacuumed out. Yeah, we'll turn those all back on again so that the uh, critters can start multiplying again. I'm going to need a lot of slickers when the time comes. About ooh, what did I work About 36 slickers. Probably a little bit more, especially with the other natural gas coming in. Might be as many as 40 slicksters I need. Which reminds me, I'm going to have to actually train up some dupes to actually handle ranching. Dope! There's always more and more you've got to do every time. Now. Hey. How in the bejesus am I going to manage this? Uh, okay, well, we'll do the easy parts first. This will be its own grid. Down 
down to there. Uh, you need to hop this rope. Wait. No, you're going to grab this rope. Okay, this second grid, I'm going to plug that directly into my main grid. That's going to start taking up the slack, because as I start siphoning off the petroleum to make sour gas, my pet petroleum generators are going to be start getting starved. So these will kick in, and well, as these kick in and the petroleum stops generating power, these should hopefully help out. Now, for the bottom ones, how am I going to manage you? Hmm. Eh. I'm going to need one row on top, one row on bottom. Eh, so you come down here, and I'm probably going to need to put in more conductive joint plates. Hmm. Eh, let me think about this for a second. Okay, kind of got something going on. This seems to be about right. I'm threading the needle in sanity here, but uh, yeah, that connects into there. These will connect into here. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure if I spent more time, I could probably come up with a sleeker and nicer way of doing this, but so long as it hooks everything up, I'm pretty happy. Um, hmm. Actually, I can get rid of those some of those power points. Let's see here. Can I actually overwrite those? Nope, never mind. You know what? They can stay. They'll look red. They'll be annoying, but... Wow, okay. Now, I'll have to plug this down into the bottom here. Hmm. Deconstructing futiles. Um, hmm. We'll put in the actual pump there. And I'll have to put in an exit point. Hmm. Yeah, this is going to be for all the water that falls out. I'm not actually sure if I'm going to go with hydrogen atmosphere in here or just leave it as oxygen. Oxygen seems like the very, very simple choice. I might just leave it as oxygen because I don't really want to get too complicated in here. And since I'm going to be using super coolant, it shouldn't make that much of a difference. And what did I make that out of? Gold amalgam? Yeah, that'll be fine. Yeah, yeah perfect. Now, how do I plug it into this sucker down here? Uh, I don't want to run this too far. Actually, you can go... Mm. You know, if I do that, I'll be plugging into that wire, which I don't want to do just yet. Um, there's fine. Actually... Oop. Here is even better. That just allows me to plug into the... That grid there feeds all the way back up to the top row, which will be the first to get natural gas. So that'll immediately start taking over from these backup generators. So once the power is on the grid from there, these coal generators should stop spitting out power all the time, which will be a bonus. I'm going to have to run this for a few cycles before I actually start getting anything productive out of it. I need to build up my stockpile of methane. I'm going to build up a large pool of the stuff. It'll all make more sense as the actual th thing comes together. Now, how are we looking on printables? Oh, we have a new printable available. And uh, no, never mind. Uh, we'll take the copper. Oh, it's also been pointed out to me that I should probably kill off all my puffs. Um, the reason being, puffs, sometimes they spawn uh, those blue ones. Where is it? Where did I put them? Oh, up here somewhere. Whoa, can it? There we are. Nope, squeaky, dense. They consume oxygen, 30 kilos a cycle. And they omit, they excrete it, 95% of it, which means they're actually destroying oxygen as they sit there. So I'm going to have to do something about that. Um, I might need to stick these all in a different type of environment, maybe cover the area in chlorine. But if I do that, I have no way of le actually letting them access the outside world. Uh, I suppose I could just wall in the area, maybe? Actually, no, first got to get the morbs out of there. I want to use those morbs or the oxygen they give off. I want to recycle that. So there's three morbs in that mess somewhere. So I'm going to have to actually wrangle all of those critters. The lot of them. That's not going to be fun. But yeah, that will need to be done. Once I've wrangled all of them, I can actually get the morbs out of there. But that's for a later attempt. For the time being... Yeah, okay, that's done. For the time being, we're going to finish up this natural gas generator system. Ooh, power's already in place. And gas? Perfect. Yeah, but I do have to run these. I'm going to have to hook up the inputs to this down here. Uh, I'm also going to have to hook up the outputs. Now, you'll see the out inputs here. I've just went straight through the input line. Uh, white is input. 
the green outputs, you don't want to run a pipe straight through them. Uh, the reason being, there'll be a constant flow of gas through there, and so long as there's even a tiny little bit of gas in the output section, it won't allow anything else to exit the machine. So if you run the output straight through those, it basically just clogs it. It's not really that bad, it's just an annoyance. Now, ventilation and eh, insulated gas pipes. We are going with ceramic everywhere. Oh, actually, we're going to have to run you out. And I'm going to have to run you out. In fact, I am not going to have enough room for all of these, am I? Eh, we can do some digging. Not a big deal. We've got enough dupes for it. Oh, no. Line up with everything else. Thank you kindly. Oh, I better finish that stairs. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to dig across here to actually put those in. Uh, deconstruct. Buildings? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, gonna have to put in a ladder system. Uh, where are we going now here? Now that we'll get them across two. Yeah, that ah, I can finish that off. Won't be a big deal. Okay, now I have to pipe all six of those into the natural gas generators. Also, I'm going to have to seal this up in some way. I think I want to expand this just a little bit more, though. Uh, the thing is, I do actually want to... How can I explain this? I do want to put in a few uh, power transformers on this side, just so I can take advantage of all the cooling that I'm going to be generating in here. Oh, yes. I was going to go with actually letting this run hot. I was going to let the whole system run hot, and then I could actually use the heat generated to create steam, which could generate me additional power. That was going to be the original plan. However, that's before someone pointed out in the comments that polluted dirt can be let off gas. Um, currently, I am producing polluted dirt. Where is it? Down here. And it's all going into my compost. That polluted dirt there, it's emitting polluted oxygen, which means instead of throwing it into the compost to turn it into dirt, which I don't need, I'm not actually using dirt for anything, I can take the polluted dirt and just let it off gas into polluted oxygen. I'll have to make a little system to take care of it, but that will be for a later date. So if I let this run hot, it will boil all the polluted water coming out of here, and the polluted water will turn into steam, which is effectively clean water. So I'd be cleaning it, and I, that means I won't be getting any polluted dirt out of the system. I pre would have preferred to really run it as power positive and actually dump it into a steam turbine, but hmm, this works. And on the bright side, my polluted water is going to come out chill. I can always use that for some cooling somewhere. Now, sweep up the last of that chunk. Oh, actually, that ladder. No, no, that ladder is exactly where it needs to be. Now I'm just going to leave in a little bit of room for a few power transformers. Eh, actually, yeah, I'm going to be sealing this up this side, so give me power. We're going to be putting in a lot of power transformers. And the one on top of there, so yeah, there'll be a f another one there. And there'll be one there. Blah. Nope, then one there. I'm going to have to move a lot of this back. Perfect. Yeah. few mesh tiles just to extend this on, and then this was wall here? Yeah, wall there. My god, that thing's a monstrosity. <laughs> when I was first putting together a sour gas boiler design, I, I, I forgot to realize that this will actually be the biggest part of the whole thing. The sour gas boiler is only going to be this size. It's not actually that bad. Okay, it's pretty big, but I was able to condense it down a bit because I'm using a, a petroleum boiler. Now, uh, you... Right there. And he's at two tiles high. Put in another one. Two tiles high. Put in another one. And deconstruct all of this junk. And two tiles high. That's more. And we'll... can we fit in one more there? Yeah, we can. Nice. Oh. Should probably put in the actual power for them as well. Uh, actually, no, I can't. And I've faced them all. I've got to face them all the same direction. <laughs> I want them all facing to the left so they can actually feed into the rest of my base. And I can go there. Gone, gone, and gone. And how much slime lung we got in here? Polluted oxygen for... <sighs> That's still annoying. I'm running around with all these little packets of polluted oxygen running around the place. You can see them there from where I dismantled the uh, deodorizers. It's kind of why there's still so many deodorizers left around the place. I'm going to have to do something about that polluted oxygen. I'm just not sure what yet. 
Well, I don't have to do something about it, but I would prefer to do something about it. Now, uh... Nope, you're facing the wrong way. Okay, and where was that bold one? You, deconstruct. Eh, now, I still need to get that polluted water out of there as well. This polluted water is the stuff that's going to be heading back this direction, so I feed it into that pipe. That's my germy polluted water. Actually, you know what? That makes no difference. Um, I do want to do this slightly differently, though. Yeah, I want to do it that way. Uh, the reason being, by putting the bridge there, that means the water I'm going to be bringing over from my power plant will actually have priority, so... Eh. The sewage can wait a little while. I shouldn't be yet putting about three, three and a half kilos of polluted water tops. Now, this is going to be all ceramic. I've decided I've got ceramic, I'm going to use it. I had 600 kilos, I've used quite a lot of it already, or 600 tons. I'm down to 367 tons. Totally worth it. Also, let's check out the decor overlay in here. Decor is unpleasant. Yeah, I don't think the dupes like it in there. Minus 145, minus 207, wow. Okay, uh, let's seal this sucker up in a bit. Uh, last of you. And I don't want to close everything up just yet. I want my dupes to have full free access, but I can start actually replacing some of these outside tiles. Actually, what am I doing? That is just a waste of ceramic right there. We are going to go with igneous rock and we're going to double layer. When you're using insulated tiles, double layering is just so much more powerful than pretty much anything else. Yeah, you can go there. If you double layer insulated tiles, it takes an eternity for the actual temperature to leak out. Though I am going to have to do something about this. You see, I could... This is going to leak chill at the bottom. Hmm. I should create a vacuum there. You know, I'll do that off screen. That's just going to be an annoying task of putting in a liquid lock, vacuuming out the area, then bricking this up. Ah, it's painful. Oh, actually, wait. No, it's going to be less painful because I don't need that. I can deconstruct it. It's this one over here that's feeding down into the bottom power grid. This is the one I'll have to take care of. Yeah, I'll do that off screen. Yeah, but this is the general gist of this. And I'm also going to put a cooling solution over here. And I'm making it a little bit wider. I need a lot of room. There's uh, These generate an awful lot of heat. So I'm going to need to deal with an awful lot of it, which means lots and lots of super coolant. And a very, very dangerously sized, uh, very powerful heat deletion device. Uh, I'm not sure. If, I think I'll probably just plug this directly into the grid as well. It's going to be necessary. Anyway, back to you in a little second. Okay, so I may have went a little bit crazy on the super coolant here. I, I don't need nearly this much. But, yeah, why not? Uh, we'll make those all sweep only. I think I've got enough in there for now. This is what I get for going absolutely crazy and building way too much super coolant. Uh, how much have we got in here? 200? No, we're going to need a lot more than that. Uh, what we're going to do here is have a super coolant loop. Uh, we'll just feed this in. Ooh, actually. I need to put in some actual bridges here uh, to give flow. One bridge there. Yeah, that should do. One bridge is all we need. Yeah, uh, so that will mean the super coolant will flow around that way and start at the bottom. Yeah, I'm good with that. Actually, we'll do that to there. Then all we have to do is hook that across. And then we can start pumping super coolant in there when the time comes. Which should hopefully be fairly soon. Now, let's deconstruct all of these junk. Right, what I've done here is I've just set up a... Oh, this is going to be my cooling loop. I haven't hooked up the pipes because... I should have done them all at once, but once they've been ghosted in... Uh, just this annoying problem. One second, we'll just hook you in there. For example, when I do this, it tries to overwrite that pipe. I know if I had it put them all down while they were ghosts, it would have been fine. It was just uh, I was doing it piecemeal at a time, so I couldn't really do that. Anyway, now that I've got that layer in, that means no oxygen is in there, so I can actually seal this sucker off. And hopefully I don't have to seal it back up again. Uh, it's ceramic, perfect. And then we're going to have to have a layer up here. Now, one, two, three, four, five. Let's see, yeah, that's going to be the... I think that's pretty much the steam turbine. That's all it needs. But I'll make it one wider than that. Yeah, and we're going to have to recirculate up the cooling to actually go up there and cool the steam turbine. Um, also, I've put in this ginormous run of piping here, you'll see. This here. This is going to be the cooling loop. As you can see, it's quite large. It's going to take a while to fill that with super coolant. Uh, how am I super coolant looking? Yeah, looking pretty good. 
So once that's completed, I can hook it up and I'll just dump in the super coolant as quick as I can. Uh, though I don't think my dupes are going to get around to any of them soon. We'll put your priorities down to three. Yeah, I don't want my dupes getting on top of that way too soon. Otherwise, I'll end up with way too much super coolant flooding everything. Uh, power. Uh, the only power I've got to draw on in this area is this stuff down here. Which, yeah, it works. Uh, you conduct a bridge. Okay, and let's go with gold all the way. That gold volcano is paying enormous dividends. Boom. Ah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, I'll just cut this out and cut forward a bit. There's just... This is just an enormous amount of construction. It's just how it's going to be for a while until this is up and running. Actually, even after that, I'm going to have to do some regular harvesting management so I can up my uh, meat production so I can keep up with the duplicates consumption. Okay, so I accidentally made all of the pipes in here out of thermium and used every single piece of thermium I had. Uh, yep, that, that was a mistake. I'm still using some thermium up here, but uh, yeah, I'm going to delete all of those and replace them with gold like a normal human being. <laughs> the, the thermium that's in there can stay, that's fine, but uh, the, the rest of it, yeah, it's all got to go. Yeah, we'll put you on sweep only. I think I've got enough super and coolant in there to tide me over for just a little bit. Uh, there's always something... You really do have to pay attention to the materials you're making things out of. I forget every single time. Uh, let's uh, get that chunk out of there. And I'm putting in some temperature shift plates now before I forget about it. A few diamond? They're diamond? Yes, definitely diamond temperature shift plates. Actually, how much uh, refined metals am I looking at? Thermium. 2.4 tons. I think I had, I had a lot more than that. Oh, they're still just deconstructing it. Okay, I'm just going to <laughs> skip forward again until this is all ripped out and I've replaced it all with actual gold plumbing. Uh, do we have gold? Yes, we're, we're set to gold now, definitely. Uh, so I'll rip all that out and replace it. Back to you in a minute. So we finally got the super coolant starting to flow. Well, okay, through the actual loop itself, we haven't actually started uh, the this cooling box. I've remembered from the last time I have to vacuum that out first. However, all this uh, building is taking way, way, way too long. So I think it's time we promoted a few more dupes to help out at the efforts. I think a couple of them are... They should be good to go. Uh, where are we? Yeah, they're all running away on their wheels up there. Um, so we've got... Cohen was promoted. I actually remembered to change them over to construction. They're a, a dig dug. Uh, Orion, I moved over to cooking because I put them in the wrong ones originally. Oopsie. Uh, new recruit three. They're tinkering is a 20 and athletics a 20. Basically, once they hit 20 athletics and tinkering... It's time to let them loose. Um, they actually get a plus two athletics from the exosuits, but they're all on barbecue, so they're getting minus two athletics from that. It's a minor minor thing. Uh, so what do we got here? We got a critter ranching. Actually, I do need a beastie. Uh, so you can be my beastie, and in your spare time, you can help out with the building. Uh, actually, should I get you into building, or... No, I'll get you to improve tinkering. That gets the construction and the tinkering. Tinkering always comes in handy, so you will be ranching. And you will be... Oh, you've got improved cooking. Well, no need for that. Actually, you will be another builder. I need more builders. Yep. Straight into building for you. So, remember this time, ranching, then building. Okay, so ranching, then building. For three and four. Uh, yeah. Where are we? Dear Lord, the dupes are... This is going to get even crazier as it gets bigger and bigger. Okay, ranching, then building. Uh, so you're ranching. Uh, so beastie. And then I believe the next up on the naming list was Charles. Uh, their base was the one that was so aesthetically pleasing. They had everything just, you know, it was efficient, but looked so nice. Well, they're going to get to manage critters. Welcome. And uh, next up we've got number four. You were building? Yes, you were building, definitely. Uh, so you're a dig dug. And this one is Bob Terminator. Now, if you remember, Bob's base was the one that was so brutally efficient, even I was sort of horrified at what he was doing to his dupes. Well, okay, it wasn't that bad, but it was her just brutally efficient. Did love that base. Thanks again, guys, for uh, for sending in the maps. It's you get I get so many ideas just from looking at other people's maps, and I'm sure everyone else does as well. You just even if it's not you, you take someone's exact build, you actually modify it slightly or do something with it. It just, it really helps, actually, when you're playing. Now, uh, let's get these, let's get these dupes out here. Well, okay, that scroll down is huge. Okay, so we get Charles and Bob Terminator. No, th thank you, you don't need to go into the gym anymore. You've done your running. 
and Charles and Bob Terminator. Yeah, basically these dupes have been running on hamster wheels until they become builders and... Oh, damn it, that plant is stifled. Why? Oh, yeah, I stopped turning the cooling loop near there. The cooling loop is actually only going through the upper half of the base for now. I'm going to have to actually rip out all of this and replace it with uh, diamond tiled all the way up. I mean, I've only got room for 50 dupes in beds, so I need another 10 bedrooms. And I'm going to need another two dining halls, so one there, one there. That can be another bedroom, or maybe I'll make a recreational room. I've never made a rec room for these dupes yet. Uh, actually, how's the scheduling looking? Have we got everyone scheduled? Yep, we're starting to get five dupes per schedule, and we've got eight schedules. That'll take us up to 80 once we get 10 dupes per schedule. And I'm going to have to start stretching out the schedule some more. Uh, now, I've been smart this time, and I've put in the liquid lock there first to start. Now we're just going to get in a quick vacuum pump here, and we're going to turn this sucker into a vacuum. Uh, yeah, no messing about. Let's just get this done quick. Ceramic uh, power cabling. Uh, I've got a power running up from this side to bring in the super coolant, so that should not be an issue. And I'm going to want to make sure that super coolant loop is completely stacked. I mean, totally stacked. This thing is going to eat, eat cooling. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, we need a lot more super coolant. All, right, all of you guys, back on. Uh, you and you. Start pumping that full of super coolant. Uh, I'm also going to need some super coolant for the cooling loop that goes through here. Now, this is just a straightforward cooling loop. I know from experience, because I did build this, well, something similar in the debug test map, this is going to be running pretty much with about 90% uptime, so I have no worries about this ever stopping. Well, that, that's a little bit of a lie. What I have worries of is messing up the natural gas and the natural gas generators stop. Then this might actually run into a problem. But if my natural gas generators have stopped running, I've got bigger problems than having a cracked pipe. I've got, you know, the complete collapse of my entire base. So if my base collapses entirely, I'm not going to worry too much about a cracked pipe. It should be grand. Grand, I tell you. Yeah. I'm going to vacuum this out, seal it up, and I forgot to put the water in, didn't I? You know what? I am going to pipe the water in. I'm going to run a pipe all the way over here so I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> Uh, okay, but uh, yeah, I'll cut out that bit. Uh, I've got to get the water from over here. I'm actually going to have to put in a second water pump. One water pump is not actually going to be able to provide for all my needs. I've got two kilos going down to the oil wells. Uh, then I've got... how many other more kilos? Where is it? Yeah, I've also got to do the toilets and sinks, and then I've got to do all the electrolyzer setups. And yeah, at times there, when, this, when I was running all three electrolyzers continuously, I was actually getting stuttering, but not from power or gas, but because the water was not getting through quickly enough. Kind of impressive. Yeah, so I'll run a second, uh, I'll run a second pump from here pretty quick. Let's see, grab us a pump. What are we going to make a bit of? Actually, I'm going to start using steel for all of these, because steel is probably going to be more, one of my more common materials now. Uh, I'm running out of everything else. All the ores, I'm actually starting to run out of them. Yeah, that's kind of a weird feeling, especially when I've mined out the whole map. Uh, how am I going to get out of here? Oh, dear Lord, okay, uh, we'll go through here? Yeah, I'll be fine. Oh, wrong button. I go to hit... Oh, hit the wrong key. Uh, you go up there and across. Where are we going? Where are we going? Oh, yeah, over here. Uh, yeah, we'll dump you in. Actually... We're going to put you to there, and then I'm going to hook you up when we're ready to go. Uh, this already a vacuum. Perfect, perfect. Uh, we'll rip out the power, and we'll get we'll get the sucker ready to run. Now yeah, you can all go. There's so many little steps you have to do just to get these suckers up and running correctly. Uh, I'll come back to you once the piping is built, and we actually start dumping in the water. I'm just going to eyeball this. It doesn't really matter how much water I put in there. And, oh... Yeah, before I hook it up, I'm going to have to actually seal this sucker. Oh, put in one block? Actually, no. Uh, hmm. I need to put in a block at the bottom because that water is going to interfere with the liquid lock. So if I dis deconstruct that block, i put one there. Dupe should still be able to get in and out because there's two tiles high on each side and then the water won't interfere with anything. Yeah. That will probably work. Probably. If there's any problems, I'm sure you'll find out. Okay, we're starting to fill her up with water now. Now, I don't need an enormous amount, but I'm not going to skimp. Uh, let's see, plumbing. How's water looking? 50, 60. Uh, let's get ready to cut that sucker off. Actually, let's make that a level 9 deconstruct command. 
Yeah, that should be plenty of water. Should give us more than enough steam to get this whole sucker started. We don't really have to worry about this thing overheating. It's just a... Uh, it'll be dumping its steam into the turbine no matter what. Assuming I've configured that correctly as well. And that's assuming a dupe shows up at some point to actually take care of it. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Now, let's actually reverse the flow on that. Uh, wow. Actually, I can't really, can I? Oh, no, I can't. Yeah, the pipe it's trying to feed off doesn't actually exist anyway. And uh, this can all be reversed. Uh, liquid bridge. And we'll just put in that there. That should empty out the whole system. And we'll disable you. Just a quick way to get all the water back into the tank. I want every single precious drop of that water. Well, okay, I am still dumping a bunch of it into reed fiber at the moment. But that shall be sorted later, just not right now. And uh, that's getting rid of everything. Yeah, once that bridge is complete, that whole line should empty. Yeah, there we go. Hey, we've got the water we want. We've got the whole system sealed up. The only thing I'm missing now is... Actually, yeah, more super coolant. There's no way I ran out of super coolant, is there? Please tell me I didn't run out of super coolant. 15.8 tons. Yeah, you know, I'm good. It was just low priority. Low priority is grand. Hey, now, for power, I've actually hooked this up to the grid down the bottom. The one running on the coal. So it's all down here into this coal array. This coal array is going to be hooked into my uh, power generation up here anyway. I've... Well, I know it's a bit confusing, but these top two lines and half of these bottom two in a mix going from in slices this way they're all on one power grid and that's cooked into the coal array this is going to be my my primary systems all the stuff that is absolutely essential for base living is going to be on this all the secondary stuff will be on this wire here which i'm going to feed off along here for now this primary power or this uh, everything else power is going to feed my whole main grid or it's going to take up all the slack once i kick it in now, where was I? Uh, the f that's full? There's no way that was full. Yeah, no, that's not full. Uh, we're going to seal this sucker up. Actually, no. We're going to clean this sucker out first, and that's what we're going to do. Then we're going to seal it up. Uh, once it's sealed up, I can then fill the loop with actual coolant. And we should be set. Now, what's this set to down here? Uh, you're set to, if it's above... Mm, no, if the temperature is below, above 999. Below. I want that to be permanently on the moment this starts, just so I can fill the whole loop with super coolant. And it should just be a case of plugging it in there. We'll be good to go. That all done? Yep. Uh, seal her up, boys. We're going to fire this sucker up. Uh, once they've got that built, I'll be right back. Uh, simplest thing to do. Let's just plug this sucker in with a liquid bridge. Two seconds, and it should be fired up. I'm sure I've forgotten something. Water goes down from the top. Yep. Wait, is that hooked up? Please tell me that's hooked up. That's not hooked up, is it? No! <laughs> okay, let's... Uh, let's turn this sucker off. Uh, oh, damn it. If the temperature is below that, turn on. If the temperature is above that, turn on. Oh, yeah, that'll keep it off. Yeah, it, it's totally off. Okay, so we can dismantle some of these blocks and get back in again. Yeah, when I deleted that uh, pipe that was reversing out, that's what caused it. Actually, I've got to delete a bunch of piping in there, don't I? Yeah, to all of you. Always trying to rush things. Always. This is what gets me. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Oh yeah, once that's cleaned out, then we can turn this sucker on. How's the rest of the loop looking? A little bit of a gap there, but that'll be filled shortly. How much super coolant we got? Oh, more than enough. Okay, uh, we're going to turn you to sweep only. We don't want any more super coolant down here. We have got plenty. Actually, let's have a quick check on our super coolant supply. Super coolant is looking... Yeah, we got we got gallons of the stuff. Oh, uh, this is where I store my visco gel when I mop it up. Yeah, I've had many, many visco gel accidents. Um, yeah, but that's where it all ends up. <laughs> There's a nice big bottle of visco gel there. How much is it? Two tons of visco gel. Yeah, that's all from my mistakes mainly. The odd one was uh, where I actually cleaned up a visco gel lock, airlock, but more often than not, it was just me messing up. Yeah. A ceramic. Yep. Yeah. Right. Looking good on this side. 
Yep, yeah, right, that should be filled just about now. Wow, that is a long loop. The problem with the length of this loop is that it actually takes so long for the, the cooling to get all the way around that it's it's very uneven. I'm going to be very cold on one side and then a little bit too warm in places because of the way it rotates around. Well, not too warm, just there'll be like about a 10, 15 degree difference instead of being an even spread. Okay, now we're good to go. Yeah. Actually, do I still have that in place? Yes, I do. All I gotta do is change this sensor. Change you to below. Off we go. Okay, that should fill the whole system. Yeah, once that's ready, if the temperature is above, say, minus 40, uh, say minus 20 actually to start. Yeah. Yeah, we full. Nope, not quite yet. Now we're full. Now if you're above minus 20, you keep rotating. Deconstruct you, deconstruct you. Uh, damn it! How am I going to get that out of there? That is way too much to mop. Ugh, I've never been this sloppy before. Um, you know what? I'll spread this out. Maybe I can mop it up. Maybe? Yeah, we'll give it. A, we'll we'll give it a, a lash and see what happens. Now, oh, deconstruct you. And mop up my visco gel airlock. Actually, wait, 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 wait. Let's leave that visco gel airlock. Just in case there is something I've missed. I've probably missed something. Wow, that steams it quick. Oh, that water doesn't actually evaporate too fast. Ah, I suppose that'll get up to temperature in a bit. Why are you not turning on? Uh, temperature below pressure. Steam temperature below 125. Oh yeah, okay, we're good, we're good. Uh, once that's finished, we'll mop that up. And that should be most of this done. Well, I do have to seal it in on one side. Uh, I'm going to seal this in and put in a visco gel airlock and probably make it double layered so that I've got a vacuum in between just to keep all the chill inside the box. This is a rather big box. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And one last thing. i got to wall up the sides as well. I don't want any of that chill getting out. Yeah. I'll cut... Uh, I'll just cut forward a bit once I've sealed this up. I'm going to actually try sealing this up and putting in a visco gel airlock. Um, I do need to actually... Hmm, maybe I should put a ladder up the side of this. You know what? I am going to put a ladder up the side of this. Actually, wait. I am not going to waste any more ceramics because I've burned through so much of it so far. Uh, that's what I always end up doing. And uh, we'll go all the way up like that. And I'll just double layer this with igneous rock. Igneous rock will work just fine. And... Oh, you got to go. Hopefully we can mop up the sucker. I just need to get one mop command off and I should be able to mop up the whole thing. So all I'm going to do is deconstruct these tiles and then as the liquid rolls out, I'll hit them with a mop command. And that way, even if more liquid ends up in there that needs to be, then is allowed to be mopped, it'll still allow me to mop it. And that should actually... Well... There we go. Yeah, too much liquid, but yeah, we're fine. That should mop it down to levels that are actually manageable. Yeah, I'll just cut it out here until I've done the cleanup. Okay, so this whole monstrosity is starting to come together. Uh, over here, I've got the entrance lock. It is basically just a two visco gel locks, and I put a gas pump in the middle, and I vacuumed it all out. So now this is a perfect insulator. Oh, yeah, I should probably actually replace that. Let's hope that doesn't mess that up. Yeah, that's that's going to mess that up. You know what? We'll leave the we'll leave the gas pump in there for now. But this basically means there's no temperature transfer between inside the box and out through this entrance. So the only way I can get out is through the tiles along the bottom or the top or something like that. I've also done a similar thing thing down here. I'm just basically walling these in. Uh, no real need not to. Might as well do everything thoroughly while I'm here. Now uh, where we got power overlay. Yeah, get rid of this as well. And now we have a fully functional lock there. I can actually rip that out, wall it in, tear it down, and be good to go. Uh, just don't remove the visco gel before I've got this sealed up, Francis. Just remember that. That's all you got to do. And get all that junk out of there first. Oh, actually, has my visco gel looking? No, 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 no fresh vis visco gel I messed up on. Uh, that's done, done, done. Oh, you can go. That's still just dragging the temperature down. Not very well, mind you, but it's still the going at it. Uh, I gotta recycle that, actually. Uh, we'll put you there, and we're going to have to replace that with a liquid vent. You know what? Let's just queue that up and get back to it in a minute. Now. Yeah. Yeah, so that's done. Simply wall that in, and now we have a perfect vacuum seal here. Now, the reason we're doing this is these conductive joint plates are going to conduct cold. So this would actually, if I just left this here, 
without this vacuum in the middle, the cold from this would radiate out and the cold would escape this area. I'm trying to contain temperature everywhere I can so that I don't have to worry about this map. I want it to be 100% hands off, as in the dupes and everything can survive happily and handily and the temperatures won't go crazy anywhere and something won't break or stop working. Well, that's the theory. Now, this just basically seals it in. Because this is a perfect vacuum, it stops any temperature transfer from happening. Uh, let's make sure they're hooked up. Yeah, they're, they're definitely hooked up across. Also, I, I discovered I'd wired these up a little incorrectly, so I uh, redid the wiring on that at the same time I was redoing the piping. So now it's every second one. So one, two, three, four, five, and since there's 11, it gets half of the last two. So yeah, shouldn't be too much of a difference. I just wanted it that way so I wouldn't have to worry about it. Now, uh, we can put all that junk into storage and we can actually start deconstructing some of this. Actually, I might double layer the bottom of this as well. And uh, in ceramic, I'll just use regular, regular igneous rock for that. Why not? This gives me just perfect insulation along the bottom. Two layers of insulated tile is effectively perfect insulation. It's better than ceramic. The only thing better than dual layer insulation is insulation made out of insulation, which is pretty rare, um, let's be honest. Uh, we can deconstruct that, get rid of you. And I might want to put in a few more ladder tiles so dupes can get up there. Uh, yeah, that'll work. Okay, so I'm almost ready to go Sour gas mat. Uh, yeah, you go there, there, there. Yeah, I'm just going to do a quick check around, make sure I haven't missed anything. Oh, I should probably wall that in another layer as well. You know what? I'm not going to worry about that. I can do all that later mincing around once I've got this up and running. You mop. Uh, plumbing. All gone. Uh, that is beautiful. Let's actually check the temperature overlay. Yeah, the supercoolant comes down here and then goes around, so you can see the bottom layers are starting to chill down nicely. By the time I fire this up, this should be icy cold and give me icy cold output. I want this to be around, well, close to 20 degrees, so that all the output, or minus 20 degrees, so that all the outputs are minus 20 as well. Um, oh, yeah, and now it's time for the sour gas boiler. Uh, just let me check a couple of things before I hook into this. Uh, before I start this, I want to make sure I have all my uh, measurements lined up so that I don't, well, have to redo half of this by the, when the time comes. Oh, you also need to go to there. Uh, back to you in a minute. Okay, just check the clock. I am running out of time. I need to get this up and running quickly. So, liquid tepidizer. Uh, we are going to make you out of... Actually, it really doesn't matter what you're made out of. Uh, yeah, we'll just stick you there. We're going to have to stick a temperature sensor right beside you. This is going to be heating up our supercoolant. Uh, our supercoolant is going to get too cold, and when it does, we need something to actually dump some heat into it. Tepidizers just cannot be beaten. Well, as of this patch, anyway. Uh, where are we going to put you? Uh... I'm also going to want to dump a bunch of super coolant in here, so yeah. Um, <laughs> I need more places to actually stand them. Uh, you all have to go, and then I'm going to want another one, maybe. Mm. No, nope, not good enough. Actually, you will all have to go as well, so let's see up to there. Uh, automation sensor. I have to put a thermo sensor in there. And yeah, gold will do fine. Uh, so for you, we want super coolant, and we want a lot of it. We are going to actually fill up this entire bottom layer with super coolant. Yeah, uh, like I said, a lot of super coolant. Uh, actually, enable auto bottle. Yeah. Mm, copy settings. And we'll put a third one over here. Actually, I better open that door so it doesn't get in the way. Uh, open. Yeah, grant. Uh, so that'll be three super coolant emptiers. Now I think I'll just skip forward until this super coolant stuff is all done. You guys don't need to stick around for that bit. It's basically just going to be me trying to find places to dump these, as many of these as I possibly can, and dumping in the super coolant as quickly as I can before I start running out of time. Okay, I've got enough super coolant in there. I also put in a, a few little pieces, basically this little cooling loop. This is uh, some radiant pipes made of thermium. Thermium because of its ridiculously, ridiculously thermally conductive. So that's all in there as well, and I've got some ceramic pipes coming up here that are going to feed into our aqua tuners that are going to provide the chilling to this area. Now, I just got to clean the last of this place up, and we'll be good to move on. Uh, this is basically the ice plate. This is where we're going to condense the sour gas down into methane again. Uh, actually, we can deconstruct that as well. Dupes can stand on that. They should be able to pick up any debris that falls down there. I'd like to keep this as debris-free as possible. Um, actually, we can also put in... Ceramic pipe, a ceramic tile there. I'm pretty much going to use all the ceramic in here. Well, lots of ceramic. Not all of it, just a lot of the ceramic I have access to. Now, window tile in there. Ooh, how 
much is in there? You know what? That's plenty. And uh, we'll mop up that. Okay, that should be the bottom layer finished. I'm basically going to put another steel door there. And then what are we going to move on from there? Oh, actually, I can start deconstructing all of these. Don't need them anymore. Bottle emptiers, you can all go. Now, this is there's going to be some non-serviceable parts here, namely because of the ridiculous temperatures involved. This is going to get down to minus 200 and something degrees. So there's no way you can put in a liquid lock or anything like that. I could probably put in a vacuum. You know what? I'm not going to. I, I've made my decision. I'm not going to make this serviceable. This will be a non-serviceable part. Uh, a couple of pieces of debris and ended up in there. I'm not going to cry over spilt milk. Uh, we'll mop that up. And then we will deconstruct this. And actually, we can deconstruct that as well. We're going to put in a door here. That's going to act as the thermal in or the thermal injector. The well, I suppose thermal injector, yeah, but it's going to be for the chill. And that can go over like that. i got to make sure I keep continuing on this power spine as I go. This power is going to feed into the pumps and the other things I'm going to build here. And that can be there. And yeah, these are gold tiles. I'm using diamond down the bottom because diamond has amazingly good thermal conductivity. This allows me to inject more chill faster. But the gold gives me more control. It has much lower uh, uh, specific heat capacity. So once the temperature that I hit is correct here, eh, I won't over inject. It's not so much of an issue on the chilling front, but it will be when I'm heating things up. Now, uh, grab that stuff up. Uh, grab all that junk. And uh, let's put in a door. Uh, we're using steel doors everywhere, of course, because steel doors are what you want for anything to do with these things. Anything to do with thermal injection. Uh, we're going to need some automation wires. Uh, where are we going to put you, actually? We'll just put you up to there for now. And then we can start deconstructing the buildings that are going to be in the way. You and you, namely. And then we can start putting in some more of these metal tiles. Gold all the way. Actually, we can build that diagonally, so we don't really need to care too much about how long that takes. Uh, is that about where we want it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've, I've measured most of this out beforehand compared it to the diagram I made, or the picture I took. So that should be fine. Uh, gold tile again. Now, this is going to be the actual cooling plate itself. So I'm going to want a few things here. First is some automation. We're going to want a hydro sensor right there. Uh, actually, we'll make everything here out of gold. It's not necessary, but I want to. And uh, next thing we're going to need is another hydro sensor right about here. This one is going to actually be an on-off switch. Well... It should only be used once at the start, but then once everything's on, it should be good to go. Uh, liquid pump. Now, we're going to make the liquid pump out of thermium. Now, I know that sounds ridiculous, but there's method to the madness. The thermium is really conductive, and it's going to be sitting inside a pool of cool methane. Uh, so because it's sitting in the pool, it's going to actually help dump chill into the atmosphere, which is kind of what we want. And that extra chill will allow it to actually help cool down the, the sour gas that we're going to be dumping down here. Now we're also going to want to use some diamond temperature shift plates because diamonds are a dupe's best friend. And then in the center of that, we're going to put one thermium temp temperature shift plate because, well, yeah, it really does help. It does really help actually pump out a lot more chill. And now ceramic. We are going to want ceramic pipes here, so we are going to dump ooh, actually. Yeah, what dump does it cost here? Actually, we're going to. Ceramic bridges bridges don't actually conduct anything, but I'm going to use ceramic because I am paranoid. And we'll put you there. This is going to pump out the methane that ends up in here. So any methane that solidifies in this plate, we're going to pump it across here into this area. Uh, which reminds me, I should start actually tightening this up. Uh, yeah, we'll use ceramic. And we're going to put in a temperature shift plate. Actually, we're going to put in one, more than one. We'll put in three all the way across there, one there. Uh, so we've got two tiles. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Let's just dump in all the chill. Uh, actually, I'm going to need a few more up here. This is going to be a counter flow, so that's why I'm putting in so many temperature shift plates. Uh, let me try and explain it a bit better while they're building that. We're going to heat the natural gas, or the crude oil here, or the petroleum here. This is going to turn into sour gas, flow all the way up around here, back down, and then it's going to end up in here and get chilled. Once it's chilled, it's going to get dumped across into this liquid vent. This liquid vent is going to dump it out here. The heat from the sour gas that's coming down here will cause it to turn into gas, natural gas, which will then flow up this counterflow, flowing against the sour gas, exchanging heat, until it eventually gets over to these gas pumps, and we extract it. Well, that's the rough idea. Uh, just one second. Oh yeah, so, where was I? I've replaced all the temperature shift plates with diamond. I now should have a bunch of thermium back. Okay, 10 tons. That's that's much more reasonable. God, that's the second time I tried to use some uh, exotic material for the wrong purpose. Uh, uh, we'll put you in there and then we'll deconstruct some more. Oh, damn it. 
that's going to bug me if I leave it there. Okay, uh, automation. Pretty straightforward. Uh, automation wire here. We are going to hook this up to that. Actually, the game's not running. Now, I've hooked it through the hydro sensor and the temperature sensor. There's a reason for this. I basically want to make sure these doors remain open until I want them to engage. I don't want them kicking in any time before that. This hydro sensor is going to detect when there's enough methane in here that I think I sh they should pump out. So this is connected up to the liquid pump, and that liquid pump is just going to dump out to here. Yeah, so that should keep the doors open, and why can't I build that automation wire? Ah! Yeah, you know what, we will deconstruct you. Uh, hopefully that won't fall down into the hole. Okay. This is going to be the chill area. Then this up here, this is going to be the hot area. This is where we're going to do the heating. Uh, we'll make this, you know what? Ceramic? Yeah, I'm going to use ceramic up here just because. Yeah, how much we got? Yeah, we got 300 something tons. Uh, ceramic there. Deconstruct some of these suckers. Actually, we don't need... Oop, no, not background buildings. Deconstruct all of these. Now, uh, I'm not sure if I can pick those up once they're in a door. I really hope I can. Automation wires. Yeah, perfect. Hey, uh, you over here. Nice. Uh, so this is basically the guts of uh, Tony Oni's design, or Tony Advanced Oni's design. Except I, I'm starting with petroleum, so I have different needs on how I chill it. And I, I went with a slightly different cooling solution as well. I wanted something that I had a little bit more... There's not a lot of built-in safety features, let's just say, on this design. This design is pretty much straight up... Yeah, just straight up, let's let's burn stuff a lot. Um, uh, deconstruct some of this other junk here. Uh, all you can go. Okay, so, we got a power wire through there. Yep, power's going through there. That will be its own power wire, because that's going to draw more power than I can put the, the Termia macro tuners on. Uh, utilities. Uh, this is where we're going to need some more thermium. We're going to put an aqua tuner there, and we're going to deconstruct these suckers. Actually, we'll deconstruct that all the way up to there. So there's going to be two thermium aqua tuners here. They're going to provide all of the actual heat for this, and I totally forgot to put in the plumbing, didn't I? Wait, no, no. I didn't forget to put in the plumbing. For once I remembered stuff. Uh, another thermium aqua tuner. Now, you're going to notice... I'm not putting any flow controls on these. These are just straight through lots of cooling. That's it. Liquid's just going to flow straight through. The only thing that's going to turn these off is temperature. Uh, if it gets too hot in here. Okay, we can deconstruct you. And we're going to put in a couple of diamond temperature shift plates. Uh, one there, one there. That just helps put in uh, temperature into the surrounding atmosphere. Which we're going to fill with a lot. And I mean a lot of water. Like, an enormous amount of water. I'm going to put in an awful lot in here because this is more... Well, not so much the safety feature as it allows me a lot more control over the cooling. The hotter these things run... Uh, damn it. I can't explain that coherently. Let me try. Um, if I let these things get too... If I put in too little water in here, it'll give me very little control over how much chilling goes on. So long as I have some water to work with as a sort of a buffer, I should be fine. Now, uh, this shouldn't go above... 650 degrees, that's probably the max this is ever going to end up going to. But, yeah, I don't want to risk it. So, uh, power. I'm going to use basically iron in here, if at all possible. Just to make sure nothing melts. I'm sure I've used something that's already gold, but actually, I'm sure the plates are going to be gold anyway. I might as well just go with gold. Um, we'll put you up through there. We'll put you up through there. And then I'm going to have to find some way to get these out. Um, where's my power supply going to be? My power supply is going to be over here. So I'm going to want to strip them out that way. Hmm. Actually, I think I might just take them right at the top. Yeah, right at the top it is. Actually, yep, yeah, straight up. And you, exact same thing. Get this all out of the way with now. Now, okay, we're going to need some automation wires from this. They're going to control... This is going to control... Oh, actually, no. The automation wires to control the doors are going to be up here. Uh, actually, damn it. Should have read more into my diagram. Uh, you are going to be all gold across here. And then we're going to actually move all that debris out of there. Damn, that's some industrious dupes. I will admit it's nice when you've got the dupes up to this level and this many of them. They just chew through things. Oh, printables. Give me a diver's lung. Give me a diver's lung. Give me a... Ah, nuts. Uh, 
I really got to keep an eye out for those because I'm, I'm missing opportunities and not actually checking as much as I should. I'm still only on, I think I've got a single dupe this round. What am I on, 28? 6, 34. I'm still on 34 dupes despite having spent so long building stuff. Uh, uh, automation. Give me a hydro sensor. We're not even going to measure temperature when we're boiling. We're just going to straight up see how much liquid is on the plate. If there's liquid on the plate, then okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to fill it with water as well. Oh, power. Yeah, no, we got the power cabling in. Uh, this other power cable, I'm not so sure. I might just bring it out this direction. That will be at the end. I just want to get the guts of this thrown together so that in the next episode we can just go straight to firing this up because it will take a bit of time to fire this sucker up. Now, uh, yeah, I'm going to get water in here. I think I'm going to actually have to pump water in here because this is going to take a monstrous amount of water. Absolutely monstrous. I like to fill this up quite heavily. Uh, going to go with iron and we're going to go with actually just a regular liquid pipe. I'm going to be pumping clean water in there, but you know what? I want to make sure that I'm pumping lots of water, and I want to get it done quickly. Uh, give me a bridge. Another bridge. And we're going to plug it straight back into... Oh, what's meant to go there? You know what? We don't care. It's going. Oh, that's the sewage line. Yeah, let's make sure there's no water going through there when that actually pops. Uh, plumbing. Another yeah, liquid pipe. Okay, done. Well, it'll be done in a minute. Uh, oh, and enable that pump. Have power connected? Yes. Uh, that should start pumping water the moment th those pipes and all those little bits and bobs are finished. Now, time to get a few of the other bits and bobs out of the way. Now, this is pretty much how it's going to look when it's finished. Uh, actually, automation wires. Yeah, the only thing that will be different is I'm going to have uh, an insulated tile there, metal tile there. Well, these basically these rows are going to be finished. So I want to get on to this next bit over here. This is sort of... Uh, the sour gas is going to come down here and condense, but occasionally you're going to get some sour gas. Well, in the beginning you'll get some sour gas that will turn into liquid methane and then immediately flash back into natural gas. Unfortunately, it's lighter than sour gas, so it's instantly going to start floating upwards. Uh, I just put in a little counter up here. All I'm going to do is make this out of, uh, let's say, granite. And this is going to pump down any gas that manages to escape. And then for the last bit of the run, we're going to use some radiant gold. Uh, actually, no, we don't have gold. We'll go with steel, actually. we got plenty of that. And run this down here and across to there. And just put out a high-pressure gas vent. So that's going to filter out any of the... Oh. Yeah, I need an actual filter on that, don't I? This is going to filter out any of the natural gas that manages to escape. And we'll have... Actually, we'll put it like that. Okay, so we'll have natural gas... No, we'll have sour gas filtered down here. And we'll have natural gas filtered to over... Hmm, here. All the natural gas will get dumped in there if it escapes up here. And any of the sour gas will get dumped down here. Well, right in here, and that sour gas should immediately condense down onto our plate. And that's the basics of it. Now, uh, i got to fill this water tank up just a little bit more. I've got to make sure that the top two tiles are active because I want that temperature sensor to be in range. Uh, Plumbing-wise, we've got all of that in place to actually do the circulation. That's good. And we're going to need to actually run a cooling loop down here, or a counter flow loop, once this is actually filled. Counter flow loop is basically going to be mostly gold with a bit of thermium thrown in. And we're going to rotate the oil through back and forth in a snake-like pattern until it gets near the bottom, at which point we dump it on the ground. Once it's dumped on the ground, it flashes to sour gas when it contacts these hot plates. Goes all the way up and through here, down here, hits this, gets chilled down. That chilled methane goes in here, turns into natural gas, and flows up here, exchanging heat with the sour gas. So by the time the, sour ga the natural gas gets up here, it's cooled off, and the sour gas will have actually cooled down. Now, uh, what are we looking at? Water. We have 600 now. We're still well away. I'm going to fill this up basically to, not the whole way, but yeah, I'm definitely going to get this to the second level. So there's going to be at least six tons of water in there. This is actually quite necessary to have the six tons of water, believe it or not. Now, I'm going to need one power wire for this. 
two power wires for that and then ooh, actually i might need another two for there i might have to actually expand this i'll do that off screen but basically i'll have to expand this and add in more power i'm going to need well this is going to draw about five to six kilowatts depending on how high you push it i've designed this so it can run uh, uh, up to 10 ki kilo ah, 10 kilos of crude oil i don't have 10 kilos of crude oil but i couldn't help myself i had to design it that way you know yourself you just you build in so much resiliency you can't help yourself uh, I don't think I can get that stuff out of there, but I'm going to issue a sweep command just in case. Oh, and that there. All right, that's the bulk of this done. Uh, I think I'll cut this out here. I'm going to expand this in the background in between episodes, and then uh, once the water's filled up, I'll strip out the piping. When we come back in, it'll just be running the radiant pipe, and then it should be just firing it up. Um, I will have to hook up these natural, uh, these ventilation gas pipes over here. So I'm going to have to do some imaginative thinking as to where I'm going to run them. But uh, it shouldn't be that hard. It'll just be running six pipes up, and then I'm going to have to run three of the pipes, the or three of these carbon dioxide pipes into one. Um, I'll have to basically run the carbon dioxide down to my uh, oil biome. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'll cut this out here then. Uh, I'll try and also hire some more dupes in the background. Hopefully I get luckier on the random number generators. Um, Apologies if there wasn't too much done, but it's namely just there's an awful lot of construction that goes on in getting one of these up and running. They really are quite an investment well if you want to run one constantly and you want to convert all your crude oil it's a lot of an investment of uh, resources anyway hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck